Hi guys, Harbs Narbs here. Today we're going to be looking at a possible link between Baldur's Gate 2 and Baldur's Gate 3 that I think may have served as a source of possible inspiration for the story. When I say may have, I do mean that. I don't think that these quest lines were originally intended to be fleshed out by Larian, obviously, but we can see here that Larian have had conversations with people who worked on the original games, and it might be from these conversations that Larian have picked up on some of the cut content, or at least been inspired by it. Okay, let's go. So when I first started my channel, I made three videos on unfinished plots within Baldur's Gate 2. The videos go ridiculously deep into a potentially unfinished story regarding the Twisted Rune, which are a cabal of liches from Kalimshan, a conclave of illithids, a troll faction with a mysterious leader, and a secret infiltration of nobles within and around the city of Athkatla. It's three videos of madness, which if you can forgive the bad audio and terrible editing, can make for an interesting watch. Anyway, I need to redo those videos and believe it or not, add even more into them. But for the time being, I'd just like to focus on a portion of that unfinished plot from Baldur's Gate 2 and try to apply it to Baldur's Gate 3. Sven Vinker has already said that there will be meaningful links between the original saga and Baldur's Gate 3, but the senior writer Adam Smith has also made it clear that they want to make the game their own. So, as I sort of explained before, there is an unfinished plotline in Baldur's Gate 2 involving a great many different factions, but it all starts with this gnome, Jan Jansen, an eccentric inventor who can join our party after we save him from getting into trouble with the Armian Revenue and Taxation Board. One of Jan's many defining characteristics is his obsession with turnips. Hmm, I'd wager the turnip market's making a killing today. Take that! Turnip hating scum! And it's this that we can see referenced in Baldur's Gate 3. This book here seems to be some kind of fan fiction written about a Baldurian who trades his soul with a devil for a turnip. And the story ends up with the devil in service to Balduron, with the final line being, Let that be a lesson to you, laughed Balduron. Never underestimate the power of a turnip. This, if anything, at least demonstrates that Larian have taken a little bit of an interest in Jan Jansen. We can also find a reference to Faldorn from the previous games and Minsk and Boo. All of these books can be found in the Druid Grove. The crux of Jan Jansen's questline in Baldur's Gate 2 is that you have to help to cure the daughter of his lost love, Lissa. Lissa's daughter has a strange affliction of the mind, and Jan's uncle, Gerhardt, directs you to speak to someone called Lady Gistev, a noble of Athkatla who can organise a meeting with someone called the Hidden. When we arrive at Lady Gistev's manor, she will agree to set up a meeting with the Hidden, but she remarks that we are not enlightened ones. So we go along to the meeting with the Hidden in the sewer. He asks us to kill two of his enemies, which can be found in the Five Flagons Inn. If we do this, he will heal Lissa's daughter. The Hidden's enemies turn out to be Githyanki, and once we kill them, we can return to the Hidden, who will reveal himself to be a Mind Flayer. So this is all part of something very odd, because if we do a completely separate quest related to a red dragon called Furcrag, we can find Tazok, one of Saravok's right-hand men from Baldur's Gate 1, who somehow survived. He has a key that opens up this door in the sewers of Athkatla, which is full of illithids and an Alhoon. A letter can be found in the base which says the following. A small section written in common reads as follows. The base is established and the infiltration continues. The hidden gathers followers and soon we shall dominate the minds of the entire. Anyway, it really is the tip of the iceberg, but I'd like to go over a few things here that could have been some kind of inspiration for Baldur's Gate 3. First off, let's rewind and go back to Uncle Gerhardt. After all, Jahira does ask why Gerhardt is aware of the mind flares in the city. Now, he is quite mad, likely madder than Jan, but there is a reason for this madness as Jan tells us the following. About a decade ago, my uncle was hired to treat a rather unsavoury fellow, a thief named Ralg. It was fairly obvious that Ralg was a high-ranking shadow thief. He had power and money, two things more than rare in Athkatla without family connections. Ralg was also daring. There are places in this city where no sane man treads, 
places in the bowels of the earth that have even the most powerful drow clerics quiver with fear at the mere mention of their cursed names. Ralg set into motion the systematic plunder of these places. He was a modern man, not given to the superstitious fears of the plebeian masses. The story goes that Ralg was found in the old temple of Baal, gibbering and mad with fear. Uncle Gerhardt, an expert in odd conditions, was called in to treat the ravaged man. As my uncle had learned through his studies, these afflictions can never be treated without knowledge of their cause. Since none but Ral could survive the trip, my uncle made the foolish decision to travel to these unholy places in search of this knowledge. He left for the graveyard and the places of the profound that are known to lie beneath it. He was gone for months and we thought him dead. Ralg was shipped off to the asylum that lies off of Arm's coast. Nearly a year later, Uncle Gerhardt returned a changed man. Something that he had seen on his travels left him quite unhinged, though hardly the mindless sack of flesh that Ralg had been. With this change came a strange ability that occasionally shows itself in Gerhardt's verbal ramblings. He has become a prophet of sorts. He predicts events, some small and some of portent. So what did Gerhardt find in this temple of Baal, and how does he have knowledge of the hidden? I mean, it's not like his knowledge of the hidden is just based on this prophet-like ability. After all, Lyssa also seems to be aware of the hidden, and the hidden himself says, one day I'll have to find a way to deal with Gerhardt and his ravings. Meaning the hidden has likely had contact and knows Gerhardt personally. But where from? I am assuming that this temple of Baal is under Athkatla, given the mention of the graveyard, but in Siege of Dragonspear there is another temple of Baal that we can go to. This one is the temple where the original protagonist was going to be sacrificed as a baby. When we go there we can uncover an illicit plot to take over the temple, and I theorised in the video I made on it that that could have been a good way for the illithids to get in contact with Baal, a member of the Dead Three and who undoubtedly have something to do with the Cult of the Absolute. So is that now two temples of Baal, one in Baldur's Gate 2 and one in Beamdog's Siege of Dragonspear that have had some link between Mind Flayers and the Lord of Murder? As I said before, before the meeting with the Hidden we have to speak to Lady Gistev, and she says, but you're not one of the Enlightened Ones, which I'm guessing means there is a group of people in Athkatla being infiltrated, just like the letter said. Well, that would be very Illithid-like of them, and a fairly familiar trope, however their agenda seems more subtle. Lady Gistev's husband is this man here, Kar, and he was a part of the Council of Six in Athkatla, which means that the Illithids aren't just interested in brains, they're really trying to take over the city, but they seem to be doing it in a subtle fashion, keeping the nobles in charge and potentially not transforming them into mind flayers. There is more evidence in Bowler's Gate 2 to show that other noble families have been infiltrated too, such as the Ronal family, but I won't go into the details of that here as it will just lead us down a very large rabbit hole. In Mindbreaker Issue 2, the Illithid that subdues Corrin, Delina and Cridal says prepare them for enlightenment, which we can see in Issue 3 is turning them into true souls. And whilst Olytherid, which is a more powerful version of the standard Mind Flayer, does mean enlightened one in the common tongue, I can't find other versions of Illithids referring to their victims as enlightened ones, and neither Gistev in Baldur's Gate 2 or the Mind Flayer in Mindbreaker seems to be referring to Olytherids at all. So what did Gerhardt see in this Temple of Baal that gave him knowledge of the Hidden? Why was this Illithid infiltrating noble families? Why did a bunch of people seem to know about this hidden plot? Was anything from this taken for Baldur's Gate 3, or was it just a classic Mind Flayer trope that has some coincidental links to Larian's Baldur's Gate 3? Lots of questions. So many questions. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this rather bizarre set of theory crafting. Please give the video a like if you did, and I'll see you next time. Bye!